that by and large his actions on climate change are completely within the authority given by the Clean Air Act, and the Supreme Court said that in the case involving the Clean Air Act, they said the greenhouse gases are a pollutant. So that was fine. Uh, things that the president did under the Affordable Care Act, uh, overwhelmingly, they were authorized by the Affordable Care Act. So if you go down the list, the number of cases where the president acted plainly in violation of his legal authority, and I'm talking about President Obama, I think zero. The act where he, cases where he acted in the end, yes, it did exceed his authority. The number is not zero, but it's not really high. So and that's what the judiciary said, and that's what what lawyers who investigated the issues would generally say. For President Trump, basically, as of this call, I'd say exactly the same thing. That is, President Trump's actions in general have either been within his legal authority, or if they've been outside his legal authority, he at least had an argument that they were inside his legal authority. So the use of regulation of the executive orders is something that um, is time-honored and is part of our system, and there are checks. Then the ultimate check is the judiciary's power to say what the law is, which means that the president ultimately has to stay in his lane, and the courts will insist on that. Now, we We've had domains um, in our history where the president did apparently stay within his legal lane, but in turn, Japanese Americans. And that was uh, you know, a shameful uh, part of our history. And sometimes presidents can stay in their lanes, but the lane is pretty big, and that can be a threat to freedom. And we saw that, I think, in the Watergate era where sometimes the president Nixon did go outside of his lane, and sometimes even acting within his lane, he did things that are, let's say, consistent with our, with our best traditions. Just jumping out a little bit, uh, did, has the U.S. Supreme Court ever ruled on Japanese internment? Did it ever find that that was in violation of the Constitution? Yes and no, respectively. It ruled uh, on it and ruled it was okay. So that was uh, maybe a lesson about the uh, caution of the judiciary in the face of a national security threat, even if just a perceived national security threat. So for those who think, as I do, uh, that we can trust the courts probably in the face of something awful, the fact that the Supreme Court in this case basically capitulated to the Reagan administration, that's alarming. We're talking with Cass Sunstein about his new book. He just edited a book called Can It Happen Here? Authoritarianism in America. In the book, he and about 19 other legal scholars and First Amendment advocates look at the question about whether or not fascism can come to the U.S. Cass, I want to ask you uh, about cheerleading by the president. Uh, during President Trump's campaign, there was a lot of cheering on of violence and that sort of thing. Uh, during the Tea Party era, you could go to some Tea Party rallies and see Oath Keepers who were armed with weapons saying that they were there to defend the Constitution. Leading up to that, I want to play an ad from the NRA that's out this week touting a new NRA TV show. This is Dana Loesch from the NRA. We've had enough of the lies, the sanctimony, the arrogance, the hatred, the pettiness, the fake news. We are done with your agenda to undermine voters' will and individual liberty in America. So to every line member of the media, to every Hollywood phony, to the role model athletes who use their free speech to alter and undermine what our flag represents, to the politicians who would rather watch America burn than lose one ounce of their own personal power, to the late night hosts who think their opinions are the only opinions that matter, to the Joy and Reeds, the Maureen Joes, the Mikas, to those who stain honest reporting with partisanship, to those who bring bias and propaganda to CNN, the Washington Post, and the New York Times, your time is running out. The clock starts now. Well, that's an NRA ad that's out uh, right now with uh, Dana Loesch. Um, Professor Sunstein, do you think that that's a call to fascism? No, and I think that, you know, we have a system of free speech that the NRA is completely entitled to take advantage of, and, and tough talk is completely part of our system. Uh, the thing I don't like about that, that I wouldn't say it's fascistic, but which is um, uh, beyond the pale, 
is your time is running out. Uh, that, you know, that, that's, that's what you say to someone who you're going to kill or someone you might say in sadness to someone who's dying. You have to say that to the New York Times or to uh, media. Your time is running out. Uh, no, don't do that. That's, 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 uh, that there's violence in those words. Your time is running out. And they really respect the NRA, I should say. And, um, on some issues, they're entirely wrong, but they're uh, part of our system, and this is not something that is consistent with their own best traditions. No, I, I worked for President Obama for four years, and then I worked for him actually a little more in a part-time capacity, and I feel that someone who worked for President Obama, it's kind of incumbent on us, this is just my personal view, to be as uh, gracious to his successor as possible. So. Uh, I, I took him to be doing these things not as literally wanting people to be hit or punched, um, but as more expressive of, uh, I don't like that dissent in my presence. Now, you're right that some of it did seem to cross the line. So I, I would be very surprised if President Trump or any president of the United States did stuff of the sort you're describing. But we've had some bad surprises, including from President Trump describing the press as the enemy of the people. And if President Obama or, let's say, a future Democratic president did that, that would be horrific. And I hope the Democrats would say that. Uh, to describe that the FBI as a partisan entity in circumstances in which it really isn't that, is that crosses the line also. And President Trump has done that. And these things aren't. You know, they aren't fascist, but they are uh, uh, echoing authoritarian, um, uh, let's say, uh, talk. And we don't want that from our elected leader. We're almost out of time, but, but it is, I mean, you have a lot of faith in the institutions, that if the institutions survive and uh, they can stand up to any assault on democracy. Uh, I do, with one qualification, I should say I'm one of the most optimistic in the book, the qualification is that if we the people aren't kind of fiercely protective of our rights, then our institutions aren't likely to be enough. So our institu institutions need us as the ultimate sovereign. Well, Professor Cass Sunstein, thanks a lot. I guess we're not going to see The Handmaid's Tale uh, in real life anytime soon. Uh, not tomorrow, not the day after tomorrow, maybe on television. All right, Cass Sunstein, the editor of the book, Can It Happen Here? Authoritarianism in America. Thanks for coming on WMNA. Thank you, a pleasure. Thanks, Thanks. enjoy it. Thank you. Great too. Time's up. We only had about 10 or 15 minutes for the interview. He was rushing to do a bunch of interviews that day. His classic projection, pretending its perceived enemy is doing what it's doing.